For section 4.2, integral exponents, the first thing I want to go over are the uh, exponent laws. So this might be a little bit of a review. The first exponent law is multiplication. And remember, with all these exponent laws, you must have the same base. So I have an x and an x. The second one, I have a 2 and a 2. And the third one's a little bit different. So for multiplication, with the exponents, we add them. So you have x and x, so my base is x. My exponent is going to be 2 plus 5, which is 7. The second one for division, when you have the same base, the exponents, the 7 and the 3, you subtract this time. So 7 minus 3 is 2 to the power of 4. The last one, when you have exponents, two exponents separated by brackets, you multiply. So I have 3 to the power of 3, 8. So these two, the 3 and the 8, you multiply. So you end up having 3 to the power of 24. What about negative exponents? Well, what do they do? When you have a negative exponent, the value in front, so the base, flips. So you flip the base. So what was on top goes on the bottom, and what was on bottom goes on the top. So you end up flipping it, you get the 2 over 1, and then the exponent on the outside becomes positive. So the negative exponent, the only thing it does is flips the value in front. Now that we have a squared on the outside of brackets, no longer negative, what I can do is I can have the squared go for both the top and the bottom. So 2 squared over 1 squared. 2 squared is 4, and 1 squared is 1. So you end up getting 4 over 1 or just 4. <clears throat> Let's try another one here. So 2 fifths to the power of negative 1. Again, I have a negative exponent. You need to flip the value in front, so it becomes 5 over 2. Then my exponent is positive. And for an exponent of 1, it stays the same, because 5 to the power of 1 is 5, and 2 to the power of 1 is just 2. With whole numbers, it's a good idea to think of whole numbers as being over 1. Any whole number you can put over 1. Because then when you have a negative exponent, you know what's going to go on the top and what's going to go on the bottom. The 1 goes on top and the 3 goes on the bottom. You flip it. Once you've flipped it, then you have your power of 3 outside. A shortcut, instead of like I did in this example where I had the 2 to the power of 2 over 1 to the power of 2, just think in your head. 1 to the power of 3 is 1 on top. 3 to the power of 3 is 27 on the bottom. You want more complex examples? All right, here we go. So, am I going to flip the 4 and make it on the bottom and then think about it? Well, it's already in a fraction form. So what I would do is simplify first. So I'm dividing. So what do I do with my exponents? Subtract. So I have negative 3 and a negative 1. And remember, I'm subtracting them. This is important. Because when you're subtracting two negatives, what happens with these two negatives here? They change to a plus. So you get negative 3 plus 1, which is actually equal to negative 2. So this whole thing breaks down into 4 to the power of negative 2. Notice all I did down here was doing dealing with the exponents. So 4 to the power of negative 2. Now I can use my negative exponent rules and flip. So it's going to be 1 over 4. Notice I put it over 1 again to the power of 2. And again, 1 squared is 1. 4 squared is 16. So my final answer is 1 over 16. So it's a good idea to simplify first. Simplify first. So on the top, with these two exponents, I'm going to add them. So I get 8 to the power of 5. On the bottom, I have 8 to the power of 5. Now I'm dividing. So these two exponents I subtract. So 5 minus 5 is 0. So I get 8 to the power of 0. And notice any time I have anything to the power of 0, it's always equal to 1, not 0. If you have x to the power of 0, that's 1. If you have y to the power of 0, that's 1. If you're ending, if this is your final answer, x to the power of 0, or y to the power of 0, or whatever you have, doesn't matter what's inside the brackets, 
So you could have 27x squared y to the power of 0 is 1. So if your final answer is to the power of 0, make it equal to 1. All right, let's do a few more here. So again, I have inside the brackets, I have 2 thirds and 2 thirds, which is good. They're the same base. That means I'm multiplying. I can do what with the exponents? Add them. So I get 2 thirds. Now, think about this. I got a negative 3 plus 5. So that's going to be 2 thirds to the power of 2. And then on the outside, the brackets I have to the power of negative 2. What do I do with these two exponents? Multiply them you have an exponent to an exponent. So you end up with 2 thirds to the power of negative 4. Okay, I'm not done yet. I still have to get rid of this negative exponent, so I have to flip. So I end up with 3 over 2 to the power of 4. Now I have to think of each one separately. Well, let's think. 3 to the power of 4, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. And 2 to the power of 4, just double it each time. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Do they have a common factor? Nope. So that's your final answer. Here, on the top, I have y to the power of 3 to the power of 0. Now, I know that's going to be 1. But let's just leave it, because it's not my final answer yet, let's work with it in the, in the equation. So 3 and 0. I multiply, so I get y to the power of 0 on top, y to the power of 5 on the bottom. My power of negative 3 is still outside. Am I going to multiply the exponents in? You could do that, but it might be easier first to deal with what's on the inside. So I have an... Ex Just one second here. So I have 0 and 5. What do I do with those two exponents? I subtract them. So I get 0 minus 5, which is y to the power of negative 5, and then to the power of negative 3. And then these two exponents, I multiply. So I end up getting y to the power of 15. Notice how I started off with a negative exponent. I could have flipped it. I could have flipped everything inside. I could have made that a 1. But if I keep everything until the end, I notice that things simplify in such a way that it makes it a lot easier. y to the power of 15 is my final answer. Now a little hint for the your turn question. Here I have stuff on the inside. They're being multiplied. So what do I do with these two exponents on the inside first? Right, I add them. So I end up getting t to the power of, now what's negative 4 plus 3? Negative 1. So t to the power of negative 1. And then on the outside of the brackets, I have to the power of negative 3. Now what do I do with these two exponents, the negative 1 and the negative 3? I multiply them. So I end up getting t to the power of 3. And that's it. So it's a good idea to always simplify inside the brackets, then go outside the brackets, just like bed mass. Right? Brackets, exponents, then you do your dividing and multiplication, then you do your adding and subtracting.